Hey, hi everyone. Phil from statisticsmentor.com and I've got a catchy title for this video. How to find an integral without integrating. Because let's face it, integrations aren't always nice to do. In fact, we usually prefer differentiation to integration. Right, well, how we can do integration without in actually finding the integral is by noting that the um, integral of a PDF, if x is a random variable, that's continuous. So if x is a random variable that is continuous and has a known PDF, we know that we integrate that PDF over the possible values of x and that should come to 1. Here is an example, gamma with a parameters alpha and beta. Here is the PDF. It looks like a great big mess. We know for a fact that, because it's a PDF, if I integrate that over possible values of x, being 0 to infinity, that we must get the value 1. But if we look at this function more closely, we're integrating, remember, with respect to x. If we look at it closely, we can see there are some terms that do not depend on x. And what do we know? We know then, if we take the integral of of this thing here, let's just call it f respect to x over 0 to infinity, and that must come to 1. But if we look at this, we can see that this term here doesn't depend on x. And then there's a term that does depend on x. And the part that depends on x is called the kernel. It's like the important part of, it's the part that involves the um, the variable. It's called a kernel. It comes to 1. Therefore it must mean that the integral of this thing here is always going to be equal to this thing. So here's our first formula. So anything with this with um, that looks like this, doesn't have to be exactly alpha minus 1, you'll see how I use it in a moment, it's going to be like this. And we know this immediately without actually having to do the integration because we use the fact that the, because people have done the hard work for us already, it's a PDF, so the integral of this thing over the whole of x is 1. Okay, I don't want to make more of it than it is because you can see it's going to work for any kind of continuous distribution. Integrate over x equal to 1, pull out the things that don't depend on x, rearrange it, and you'll get an expression. Okay, so how can we use it? Well, let's say I want to find, here's a question. Say that the random variable x is a gamma and has a parameter alpha and beta 1. Uh, let's say where alpha is an integer value, positive integer value. Again, okay, yeah, when alpha is positive, let's be clear. Find the expected value of x. Okay, let's try. So, there's various ways to do this. Um, I'm going to do it using f this fact that I've just found out. Expected value of x, definition, sum, uh, integral of x, uh, fx dx, over all possible value of x, which is um, for a gamma is 0 to infinity. Okay. Now, then what do I do? Um, then I just go to a side here and tell you a fact that this function here for integer values of alpha bigger than zero that comes at, is going to be like x minus one factorial. Okay, so that has an impact on this PDF here for gamma alpha one. Okay, so all I'm going to do put this is the PDF, so you've got set alpha just to be alpha, beta, anywhere beta is going to be a 1, right? So I'm going to write this thing down as f of x down here. So let me do that now. This is going to be x, let's do it, alpha minus 1 all factorial. This whole bit I'm going to write now is the fx bit, x alpha minus 1, x e to the minus x dx. That's what I want to find. OK. 
OK. I say to myself, right, this integral with respect to x, some things don't depend on x, let's pull those out. Let's pull that out. Uh, that x and times of that x, x to the alpha, e to the minus x, dx. Now I've got this form, um, the variable to the power of alpha times exponential, that should be a minus, let's make to the minus x. Look at the, sh look at the shape thing. Now do I actually have to do that? Well, one way to solve this thing is use integration by parts, which is a great big mess, and I'm sure you want to avoid it, like I do. So you look at this thing and you see a great similarity there. All right, and what is it exactly? Well, if we look at it closely, we can see that uh, this alpha is like that alpha minus one. They're not the same alphas, you know. That parameter there is same as this parameter there. And my beta is 1 because it's not there. So no, noting that, substituting that in here, I've got the first bit first, x minus 1 factorial. And we can write that this thing down, but just to alter slightly. So that is um, going to be alpha plus 1. OK, because that's alpha minus. If that's alpha minus 1, it goes to a plus one on this thing, so it just goes to alpha. So this alpha will go to alpha plus one, and then times um, beta, which is one to the power of alpha uh, plus one, which didn't have to write that down, but I did. So fantastic, we did it in one step, and didn't have to even do the integration by parts, which I'm sure delighted you. So we have here alpha minus one factorial times um, plus 1 is what it is, but since it's um, alpha is an integer, using this rule here, we know that this thing may be also written as alpha factorial. Alpha minus 1 factorial equals to alpha finished. More time to watch TV or watch YouTube. Okay, before ending this, let's see another example, beta distribution. Here it is. We've got parameters alpha and beta. Uh, this one over b to the alpha beta maybe expresses functions of gamma, so let's just forget it, right? Just a whole heap of stuff. Um, again, if we integrate this thing, let's get a result. Integrate this thing with respect to the variable x, it's going to come to 1. So from this, we see immediately that we have the following relationship, uh, which is that the integral of x alpha minus 1, 1 minus x beta minus 1 over x between these two values of x must equal, drag this up, beta. Alright, example. How about if we have to find something like this? Um, that. Well, we can see that this is basically, this random variable p there is beta with parameter alpha plus 1, beta plus 1. Just comparing these, looking at these coefficients. And therefore, that integral, let's call it star, because I'm, therefore this star must equal uh, this function here alpha plus 1 beta plus 1 which if you wanted to know it is if we substitute it properly for in terms of gamma functions it's it looks like this okay and there's one more that comes to mind exponential so tr try think about just get hold of the exponential and uh, see what formula you come up with with that. All right, so that is um, uh, integration without actually doing integration. Certain times you can do this. Hope that's been helpful.